you made it. How about that? You made it. It's our last video lecture. So we'll go through the lecture today where we talk about change and leading change and uh, just a little bit more information about just some life lessons. Wednesday, you'll have the 4th of July. Thursday, I'll put out a little test uh, review and then post a test. That test will be available through Saturday, and we're done. Hopefully, by the time you're looking at this, I'll have most of your assignments uh, edited, except for um, I'll be catching up on 4 and 5. But uh, certainly by midweek or later week, I'll have all of your grades in as you take the final. And again, you can do it easy based on 450 points uh, where you need to be to get an A, B, C, etc. But we're going to talk today, we're going to finish up about, we've talked a lot this semester about how our industry and just all industries really are changing. So I thought it'd be great to finish up with this about leading change. And as a manager, and this again has been a management class, uh, charting a course for change. And one of the first things you want to look at, you can do this with your life, you can do this with your team, you can do this with whatever, of, of how you should get better. The first thing you just look at is what are the top three things we're doing well? And you write them down and you put them down and you list them, however you do it. And then you look at what are the top three things we're doing badly or poorly? And then you can add on top of that, okay, what are the top three things we need to do to fix them? One thing that I tell people, don't bring me a problem. What are the top, what are the top three things we're doing badly? And you don't bring me a solution to those top three things. That's, that's not acceptable. So as you look at those things, remember those three questions. What do we do well? What do we do poorly? How can we fix what we're doing well? Let's look at the hedgehog. Hedgehog's really good at, at protecting itself, right? And rolling itself in a little ball. And he knows, the hedgehog knows what he does well. Doesn't try to do too much. Doesn't try to be a lion. Doesn't try to be anything else. Uh, and you should apply that to a business. Or yourself. Or your life. Or whatever. There's three circles of the hedgehog concept, and this is from uh, the Jim Collins book, From Good to Great. What are you deeply passionate about? Okay, and you list those out. What, what are some of those things? What are some things you can be the best at the world at, in the world at? And that may be a little too much. You might list that to your own little part of the world, your own universe. And then the last thing is what drives your economic engine? So if you're a business, What's the business really good at? What's the business, what could the business really be the best at? And what drives our economic engine? If you if you can find the intersection of those three things, like we see there with the old hedgehog, if you see, look at those three things. You can't, I've got the little red thing, but you can't see it in the, there you go. If you can find that sweet spot, that's your hedgehog. That's what you really take and you it moves your business. Sometimes there's no change needed. Sometimes we're courting a, a path, we're charting a path that's pretty good, it's, it's right on. But sometimes you have to be able to make the change and you have to know it's time to make the change. What are you going to be doing in 2028? What is, think of that, 10 years from now. It's not that far overall when you think about it. What are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be? What's the world we're looking at going to be like? In 2028, remember, let's go back 10 years. Just started the iPhone. The iPhone just came out. Look at it now. Most of us can't live without it. What do you be doing in 2028? Where are we going to be 10 years from now? Steve Jobs had an idea in 2028. Think about where Twitter was in 2008 versus where it is now and what can be done now. What about Facebook? The numbers are staggering when you look at the numbers of growth from Facebook, which went from at one time just something that college students could use and access to now your grandparents are using it. That's probably one of the reasons you're not on it, because your grandparents are on it. Instagram. Instagram wasn't even around, I don't believe, in 2008. And it's very important. I was just, we were just talking in our building here about how important Instagram is to our social media future. 2008, Instagram. The heck is that? You have to be able to take everything, all of the aspects, and you have to be able to manage them. You have to manage them personally. How much time are you going to spend? There's nothing worse when I see a group of, of 
college students, whatever, sitting together, and they're all on their phones or their tablets, whatever, and they're not talking, they're not conversing. It's just, it's maddening a little bit, right? And it's the same for your business. You can't do everything. You can't be all things to all people. So you have to decide, where are we going to be good? What can we do that makes us better than others? What are we good at? And how can we keep doing it? Look at that little hedgehog. He also thinks he's good at lifting weights. Probably not his area what he should do, but he should do it. There needs to be some boundaries. There needs to be some safety boundaries of where you are. There needs to be some significance to what you want to do. And you have to have some control over, over those things. When you threaten these things, when you threaten your business, um, you get people that, that don't come along. Some people just don't like it. Some people don't like change. They don't like it personally. They don't like it professionally. And you have to decide who do you want on your boat. The great way you do it is by being a communicator. You communicate to everyone involved. Never goes out of style. That's one thing I would tell you is if you're a good communicator now, 10 years from now, that's going to hold you well. It's going to be a good uh, trait and talent and skill to have for being a great communicator because all of these things, no matter what you do and no matter how much we rely, this isn't Terminator, how much we rely on computers and machines and technology, you still have to go to the next person and talk to them and communicate with them. And one thing as a manager that you always need to remember, lions don't lose sleep over the opinion of sheep. You can't worry about uh, what somebody, an underling or another, is saying or thinking or doing. Was it the great philosopher, Dr. Phil, who said uh, you would be surprised at what people think of you when you realize how little they do? They're not thinking. People are worrying about their own thing. They're not worrying about, about your thing. They're worrying about their, their thing. But the other thing is, I think Dr. Phil said this too, what other people think of you is not your business. You can't control what other people think about you. You can only control your actions, how you move, how you operate, how you manage, what's best for the business. So don't forget those things as you go through and manage uh, the leading change. I wanted to take you through uh, some of the final parts of this class. And some of this thing is a few life lessons we want to give you. Some of these things are things that just annoy me. Uh, and we'll start with uh, this one. So we're going to go to uh, the word matriculate. Does anyone know what the word matriculate means? Do you know what it means? If you do know what it means, you knew what you meant before you got here, uh, tell me about that on the message board, that, that you actually knew what matriculate meant. Look at what happened in 19, I believe, 69, it might have been, that uh, NFL Films does a great job, right? They they do video clips, and uh, they do great long-form documentary videos about the NFL. And here's Hank Stram. He was coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, and they played in the Super Bowl against the Green Bay Packers, and then they played a little a couple years later against the Minnesota Vikings and won the Super Bowl that year, and Hank Stram was the coach, and NFL Films caught, caught this. Come on, Lenny! Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. Come on, Lenny. Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. Keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. Lenny was his quarterback, Len Dawson, and, uh, and old Hank Stram is telling him, just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. And so now you'll hear on ESPN, you'll hear on – uh, local radio, you'll hear in a lot of places, uh, you'll hear announcers talk about, hey, you know, he's a great quarterback. He does a good job of matriculating them down the field. And there's a great, great little site called From Bloggers to Be Named Later. Uh, if you're a sports fan, you understand about trades. You trade for a player to be named later. So let me read this. Matriculating the ball down the field. Here's a phrase you hear a lot, and it's a rare instance where we can pinpoint the first use of a completely made-up definition to a pre-existing word that already had its own perfectly good definitions. In 1969, Kansas City Chiefs coach Hank Stram was caught on a microphone telling his boys, uh, players, just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. He really could have said anything there. Time to anthropomorphize the ball. The grass clippings, boys, and sports commentators would have started using the phrase. Matriculate means to enroll in college. Not the correct usage, matriculate down the field. Enroll in college. Matriculate the ball down the field, boys. We're rolling college down the field, boys. My point is this. 
If you're going to use a word, a big word, any word, know what it means. If you need to look it up, look it up. If somebody says a word to you that you don't understand, look it up. Dictionary is still a great, uh, a great uh, source for people. And really don't say it. I hear this all the time. People say, especially. It's especially. Um, irregardless. It's not a word. Regardless is the word. Just little things like that. I'll give you a, just a, something that's uh, not on here, but I always tell people this. When they say, hey, I'm not trying to be rude, but guess what? They're about to be rude. Uh, I'm not trying to say, change the subject, but guess what? They're about to change the subject. To make a long story short, too late. So just remember those things. Matriculate is not a word. Another one that I see a lot in writing, and you guys have been great this semester not doing it, uh, lose and loose drives me crazy when I see people. Texas Tech is going to loose tonight. It's lose. Lose is the opposite of win. Loose means not tight. Again, not going to be caught on spell check. I should show you. We had an ad for uh, uh, my boss, Kirby Hocutt, in a big national uh, presentation. He, was, he won an award, and um, we misspelled the word congratulate. And should have been caught on the spell checker. It should have been caught on spell check. It wasn't a lose, loose, there, there, two, two kind of thing. It was loot, it was congratulate, misspelled. Uh, sometimes proofing and all those other things is really a, is really a, a plus. Just a couple of rules for life that I have. Remember, I just told you one. Complaining is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. You have to have a strategy, but don't be a complainer. Don't be a person that comes into work every day and complains all the time. Come in, do your job, be better than the person next to you, be better than you were yesterday. Don't be a complainer. Remember, in your life, in your job, in your career, crap happens. Just some things are going to go wrong. You're going to go to work. You're going to misspell congratulate. You're going to put a date wrong on something. Crap happens. And so what do you have to do? You got to clean it up. Look at this dog. He's saying, you're right. I got to take care of my business here. So this can be applied to your life. If you make a mistake, you know, when I found out congratulate was misspelled, uh, I told the guy that told me, let's see if we can pay for a reprint of the publication. You know, I'm trying to clean it up. I was trying to be the dog. Unfortunately, all the publications were already printed, so there's nothing we can do about it. But sometimes you have to clean it up. It's hard to talk about this in an online class. You never get a second chance to make a first impression, uh, said by Will Rogers, who's sitting on that statue out there in Memorial Circle. Um, just remember that when you're meeting people, your handshake, eye contact, uh, just your whole demeanor. If you're dressed sloppy and you're kind of lazy and you're not looking at them and you give kind of that wet fish handshake, it's hard to get past that. You've got to make your best impression uh, on your first one. Hard to get it up. Get you know get that back. Uh, I think we're going to come back to this one, but uh, just show up. This class would have been is just would, is easy enough if just log in and watch the watch the lessons and go through that. Just show up. If you're you don't go to class, go to class. If you have to go to work, go to work. You gotta go to practice, go to practice. Whatever it is, just show up. Be present. Be paying attention. Look at these two dinosaurs. They weren't present. They didn't realize that was the day of the ark, and they missed out on the uh, missed out on the big uh, sailing. Be present. Listen. When you're in class, don't always be on your phone or your laptop or whatever. Be present. Listen. It doesn't take that much out of you for 50 minutes or 55 minutes, whatever. When you're wherever you are, at work, at church, movie, wherever, be present. Do your own thing. If you're looking for a sign, you, you got to sometimes make your own sign. And I'm not a big believer in everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in you make things happen for yourself. You make things happen. And you, you've got to do your own thing. You've got to be passionate about what you're doing. You've got to love what you're doing. And, you know, early on, you might not find a job that's your dream job. And we talked a lot about dream job early on in the semester. But do your thing. Be you. You do you. Um, electronic media, you're going to be a lot in the public. Sometimes you've got to ignore the haters. You've got to Understand that people aren't going to like you. People are going to complain about you. People are going to say things about you. I, having done some play-by-play -play and having done uh, news and radio shows, I, I've read a lot of really nasty, negative things about myself. 
it's hard sometimes to ignore it, but really, if you want to do the right thing, uh, you have to ignore it. Guy Bailey, who was the president of Texas Tech, told me one time, he said, I don't read message boards and comments because I still have to do my job the way I think I need to do my job. And I cannot have people putting negative thoughts in my head. So you have to ignore the haters. Rely on behavior. Uh, it's funny, I was watching a show the other day and they mentioned Goofus and Gallant and I bring it up. I don't know if it's Gallant or Gallant, but we always said Goofus and Gallant. If you've ever read Highlight Magazine, Goofus and Gallant show themselves, uh, their brothers, and when Goofus runs with scissors pointing up, Gallant walks with the scissors pointing down. Gallant's always acting the right way. Goofus is always being uh, Goofus. And again, you're not going to fix people generally. You're not going to change people's behavior. So this is great in dating or life. Or if a boss is a bully and he's yelling at you or she's yelling at you, uh, generally, that's their behavior. That's who they are. Uh, if you're dating somebody that doesn't treat you what right, uh, that's probably not going to change. For a lot behavior, people, you can learn about people just by watching their behavior. So remember that. Be mindful. Again, this goes back to put the phone down, put the iPad down, put put things down, and just enjoy life. Sometimes, as you see the uh, late, I don't know if that's a guy or a girl walking their dog. Dog's just enjoying the trees and the sun. Uh, the person's thinking about work and phones and relationships and all those things. Sometimes you just got to enjoy the ride. You just got to stick your head out the window and say, that's a great day. I'm not going to worry about a bunch of things. If you spend your time worrying about all that crap there on the left, it takes away the enjoyment of everything else. Guess what? You're not getting another run at this. This is your life. This is where you are. You can change today if you're not in a place you want to be. You can change that immediately. Starting today, you can put yourself in a better place. But you can't go back and change what happened a week ago or even yesterday. Uh, I always tell young people this when they're starting a job, starting an internship. Just say yes. Yes to opportunities. Yes to making things happen. You can do this. Yes, I'll do that. You don't ask, hey, what do I get paid for that? Or when vacation time is, well, that. You just, you're ready to go and you're eager to, to prove. This is a lesson I always tell my class uh, I don't think we talked about it this semester, but as the story goes, Wally Pipp um, was the first baseman for the New York Yankees. Lou Gehrig uh, was a rookie on the Yankees. Wally Pipp had a headache, uh, couldn't go one day. Lou Gehrig uh, was put in the lineup. He played the day before as a pinch hitter, but he was put in the lineup. And it was 2,000 some odd games later before Lou Gehrig ever took another CD. For the longest time, had the streak for the longest, uh, most consecutive games ever played. Uh, by a Major League Baseball player until broken years later by Cal Ripken Jr. Wally Pipp was out of baseball the next year. And so the reason I say say yes is because guess what? The person behind you is going to say yes. There's in the College of Communication in my class every semester, in my longer classes, I have 60 uh, students. I've got 20 here. So let's say it's 140, 160 when you take next summer session. Every year, here comes another 160. Here comes another 160. Here comes another 160. There's always somebody nipping at your heels, always somebody willing to go the extra mile. So you need to be that person too. And again, remember, we can't predict change. We saw this video, this picture earlier from Benedict and Francis. Life is changing. Saw that on the College World Series in the final out. Most people weren't enjoying it. They were trying to do this. They were trying to capture the moment on their uh, camera or whatever device they had. Sometimes it's just good just to watch and just enjoy it. And again, go back to this. I recently failed at what? And we've all got failures. I can go back now. I can now just go a day back or a couple of days back and go, we screwed up the word congratulate. And again, I didn't do it. I didn't lay it out, but it's my people that did it. And what am I going to do? How am I going to react to that? I called Kirby. I told him. He knew about it before he saw it. And that's all you can do. You just own your mistakes and you move on. Remember, I told you this earlier. Muhammad Ali, a champion, always gets up. So you get knocked down, you get knocked, you get back up on your feet. And always remember this. So what? Nobody dropped a heart. Nobody's any worse off for the wear. Sun's probably going to come out again tomorrow. It's going to be all right. Life goes on. The, the world keeps spinning. And you learn from what you've done. Even your positives. You can't, if you do something great today, 
You go tomorrow, so what? You gotta you gotta live tomorrow as well. So you've got to enjoy these things. You gotta enjoy your life. You gotta pay attention. You gotta be mindful, but you also have to keep moving on. Again, just show up. That's a great lesson to remember. Whatever it would be, just show up. And be aware of yourself and understand sometimes you are lying. Sometimes people look in the mirror and look at that cat. It's got plenty of self-confidence. Be confident in yourself. Be confident that you can do the job. Be confident in the way you act. Shake hands. Look people in the eye. Be respectful. Those things go a long way. Maya Angelou said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. You know how many billionaires in the world that have been broke at one time or another in their life. There are a million stories like that and on every level. And again, you just learn from things uh, that affect you positively or negatively, and you move on and use those. I can't say it enough. Do what you love. Love what you do. I work a lot of hours here at my job at Texas Tech. I work a ton, but I never feel like I'm at work. I feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm doing things, but I love what I do. I love the people I work with. I love my job. I love what we do. I love all those things, and that's worth a lot. Remember, you're going to one of the greatest universities in the world. No matter what anybody tells you, Texas Tech is a great place. You're getting a great education. You're working with, being around great people. Don't ever forget that. Bear our banners. You know, it's in our school song. Bear our banners far and wide. Don't be somebody that's out there demeaning or diminishing Texas Tech or diminishing what you do here at Texas Tech or your education here at Texas Tech or what Texas Tech is doing. It's a great place. It's better because you're here and be the best people you can uh, for Texas Tech. And again, you determine what that is. Your dream job is going to be basically whatever you determine it is, and nobody else can determine that for you. So have a great, safe, happy 4th of July, and uh, be back here Thursday looking for um, the, uh, the final review and take the final and uh, go on there. If you haven't done your evaluation for the class, please do so. Uh, this is the last two semesters of this class. They're changing it all up. Anyway, so um, not sure any of that matters. Uh, but, you know, you want to make your voice heard, especially if you're unhappy with me or something that uh, I've done in this class uh, as we're still kind of manipulating. I almost said matriculating, uh, m manipulating through uh, how to do an online class in a class like this. But again, this whole class is going away and they're making it more of a project based class. Uh, after next summer session. So uh, I do appreciate all of your time. I, I enjoyed a lot of the, what uh, you people wrote on the message boards. I've got a little bit of look inside into your personalities. Um, and so I do appreciate that. And because it was an online class, I do like to have the interaction uh, with the students. So please, if you're ever in the South End Zone building, Gabby, I know you will be. Uh, come here and see me in my office. Introduce yourself to me. Um, and make sure that uh, I get to know you or get to at least shake your hand, look you in the eye. Uh, thank you for being in the class this semester. And, and uh, I always tell my larger classes this, in-person classes this. Uh, we're part of a, a family now, right? You're part of the uh, uh, Robert Giovanetti EMC family. So if I can help you with an internship or I can help you with not an internship just here, but somewhere. I know a lot of people on campus and in Lubbock and around. Uh, and so as much as I can try to help you, I would love to do so. Uh, so again, have a safe fourth. Uh, don't make bad decisions. Make good decisions over the fourth. Look for the uh, for the test review, and we'll go for there. So thank you again. I'm going to finish it out.